Greg the Beach, we're all set here. Alright. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Oh, great. Okay, time. Go! Still, good of him to provide lighting so we can work in it. Stow it, Rod. Come on, give it some welly. Places like Fort Knox. Well, the bloke's a professional burglar. He should know how to keep people out. Might there be an easier way? We have a warrant here to search these premises for stolen goods. This is outrageous. It's the middle of the night. Can it? Terry, they can't just walk in. I said, shut it. Boy. Why don't they come out and see what we're doing? We must have woken up by now. Perhaps he's too busy disposing of the evidence. Right, do the door, Scott, do the door. Right, come again, Jane. Wakey, wakey. Must be a heavy sleeper. Come on, sunshine. Is he breathing? Yeah, we need an ambulance. No excise, nothing. Keep looking, though, will you? I could have told you there ain't nothing here. Yeah, we'll do, Sarge. Make yourself useful. I could do with a cuppa. Oh, why don't you make it yourself? I'm busy. I do it. Another word, Sarge. Okay. Right. Cheers. Keep an eye on him, will you? The ask Greg's run into problems. They called an ambulance. Len Moss is unconscious. I thought Terry didn't seem too worried. The gear must be at Big Len's place if he put up a fight. Well, we don't know that he did. Why else would he be hurt? Accidentally fell down the stairs, perhaps? Get real, Susie. I bet Alistair's in a flap. Yes, Greg needs to know where Sharon Moss is. He thought she might be here. <laughs> this gets better and better. Nothing, inside or out. All the doors and windows are secure, locked and bolted from the inside, so no one could have broken in or left after he was hit. Right, look again. This time check for any signs of a struggle or if he's hit his head on a cupboard door or anything. What do you mean, bloodstained poker in the library, that sort of thing, yeah? Keys, Terry. So where's your car? In the garage. Thank you. Come on, show me where. Lisa, where did Sharon Moss spend last night? Done their place as well, have you? Yeah, and she wasn't there. Has she got another bloke? <laughs> you must be joking. Not her. Why don't you ask Len where she is? Because Len's on his way to St Hugh's. That's why we need to find her. What's happened? I really don't know. You're lying. You do know what's happened. No, I just know he's been taken to St. Hughes. Someone's messed up, haven't they? Or did he accidentally fall over? Is that why you're not telling me? <laughs> right, I'd better get some clothes on. I'll have to go with you to tell Sharon. She'll go to pieces otherwise. Lisa, where is she? Sharon's mother was taken ill last night. She went round there to stay. She was looking for Len to tell him. OK, Terry, open the boot. You what? Do it yourself. Stay here, you. Dave.
I'm fixing it for a friend. Well, it's nice of the owner to engrave his name on the back here. What did you say your friend's name was? Uh, Gerald, I think. Oh, yeah. Now, that's not what we've got here, you know. Did Gerald also tell you that he won this delightful work of art? A second prize in an Elvis look-alike competition? Hey. Right, when you're finished here, Terry can run me over. What have you done, you stupid, stupid pillock? <laughs> How is he? We're sorting out a scan, we'll know more then. Have you located his wife? She's on her way. We'd like to ask her permission to operate. What happened? Some sort of brain hemorrhage, secondary to a blow on the back of the head. Excuse me, uh, doctor? Mrs Moss? Yeah. Please, uh, would you come into the office? I'd like a word. He's dead. No, no, uh, please, let me explain. I know you. You're old Bill. Well, I hope you're satisfied. First you fit up my husband, then you half kill hers. Well, we could start with this. Exhibit DQ1. I'm showing the suspect a pink tape cassette player shaped like the rear end of a Cadillac car. Where'd you get it? From a mate. I like to mend things. I've got a bit of a reputation for it. Well, it wasn't broken when it was stolen in a burglary on the floor. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Fancy Gerald doing a thing like that. Gerald who? Do you know? I don't believe he ever mentioned his other name. Come on, Terry, you can do better than that. I don't think so, somehow. It's not my fault if the truth sounds strange. Where were you last Wednesday week? I'd have been at home with the missus. Ask her, she'll confirm it. What about last night? Where your mate found me, in bed with her wife. No, no, no. Before that. I was in the pub at Cranley Arms. Who with? Len Moss and Gerald, of course. Oh, yeah. The bloke who looks like Elvis. <laughs> no. Gerald don't. Like the bloke he nicked this off might do. What time did you leave? I don't know. Half ten, maybe later. Did you leave together? Gerald wasn't there very long. Then I left. Len was finishing his drink. And he seemed well when you left him? He was fine when I last saw him, yes. But that was before you lot had a go. Right, excuse me, excuse me. She wants to make a complaint. Is that right? Yes, sir, we'd like to talk to a chief superintendent or something. We'd like to talk to him now, all right. Uh, well, <clears throat> if I could take a few details and I'd get hold of the relevant person. Uh, name? Sharon Moss. Listen, I just want to Look, talk... it's about her husband, Len Moss. He's on the critical list and it's one of your detectives. What put him there? So do you think you could get me someone in charge now? Sounds like a right cock -up. We have recovered one stolen item and we may find more. Well, we're hardly going to get them for all these burglaries with one item, are we? And one stereo, no matter how flashy, does not make up for one suspect in hospital in a coma. He was already unconscious when we arrived. Prove it. Not to me, to his family and friends. From what I understand, that house was securely locked from the inside. Well, he must have been assaulted by somebody he knew. Who locked himself in and then vanished into thin air? It doesn't make sense, Alistair. Look. When Len comes round, he can tell us what happened. And if he dies, we'll have the CIB crawling all over us. Sharon Moss is downstairs. She wants to know what's happened to her husband. Her friend wants her to make a complaint. I thought someone might like to calm her down before she does. All right, Alistair, I'll handle this. Give you enough time to sort things out, but you're going to owe me one. Thanks, Andrew. Mrs Moss? I'm Detective Inspector Deakin. I thought you had a friend with you. Yeah, she had to go check something out. Look, Firstly, may I say how sorry I am that your husband is so ill. Have you heard any more about how he is? They're operating on him at the moment. Well, let's hope for the best. Now, I understand you want to make a complaint. Look, I've got to go. I'm sorry? I've changed my mind. I should be at the hospital with Len. So you, uh, you don't want to make a complaint then? I've got to be there in case he comes round. I mean, I know they said he wouldn't for a long time, but he might, mightn't he? I should be looking into this anyway, Mrs Moss, to satisfy myself that everything was done to help your husband, whether you decide to make a complaint or not. 
Listen, can you call me a cab? I want to go now. Well, there's no need. We'll organise a car for you. It's the least we can do. And if you want to talk to me again, please, feel free. I should never have left him on his own. I just didn't think. It's all my fault. I should have been there when he needed me. What the hell's wrong with you anyway? You filthy Is that the best you can do? I'm surprised you can even spell it. Look at her. She's nothing but a tart. Well, at least I ain't a dog. Well, go somewhere and talk about this privately. Do you mind? Can you keep your nose out of my business? Me? What about you? You should be had up for theft. Other women's husbands, not to mention grievous bodily dress sense. I mean, look at you. Just You're the laughing down. stock of the estate. Always have been, always will look, be. You stupid. Keep them out. See, I'll ask them 561. Urgent assistance oh. required. No. Oh. Why gate is right. right. I'm going to get it. Why don't you get it? I've spoken to the landlord of the pub. Len and Terry were definitely there last night. But no Gerald? No. And no Elvis lookalikes either. And did Terry leave first? No, they left at the same time. The landlord remembers because they were arguing. Interesting. Yeah, that's what I thought. And Sharon came in after they left looking for her husband. Debbie's just brought in Lisa Norton. What's she been up to? Well, apparently she'd been brawling with some brass on the white gate, and now she's asking to talk to whoever was in charge of this morning's bumblebee raid. She wants to speak to us? Yeah. The question is, knowing the lady, do we want to speak to her? I want a word with you. You beat up Len. You shouldn't have done that. Give her a rest, Lisa. Oh, what's the matter? Don't you want to hear what I've got to say? You can't make a complaint, Lisa, because you weren't there and you're not family. Wait! I've got something else to say. Well, I haven't got all day. Anyone would think you didn't want to know where that slime ball of husband of mine keeps all the gear he nicks. Go on. Well, not in here. And I couldn't half do with a cup of tea. Go on, then. You've got him in there, haven't you? You got that two timing bastard of a husband of mine in here somewhere! Where are you, Terry? Lisa, what are you doing? I'm gonna cross you on Terry! What are you doing? And I'm gonna make Lisa. sure you go down! Lisa! Lisa! They sound Lisa! Lisa! Terry! I'm gonna enjoy every minute of this! Lisa. All right, Terry, all right. Lisa. Enough. Lisa. Keep it down, or I'll bring your old lady back. <sighs> so Terry's upset you then, has he? No, oh, you're quick. What's he done? Only had it away with Denise Bishop the estate bike, hasn't he? Says who? A friend, Sharon. And how does she know about Terry and Denise? What does it matter? Do you want to hear what I've got to say or what? We're all ears. Right. Terry's got a bed sit. Gateside Street, number 4B, rents it under a false name, keeps all the gear there till he can get a buyer. Key? Same ring as his car keys. Why are you telling us all this? Has he never been unfaithful before? Oh, Terry's always chasing a bit of skirt. I've put up with it for years. What makes this one different? Oh, please. This time it's an insult. I mean, me, Len and Terry, we all grew up together on the White Gate. Sharon too, except she was younger. Well, anyway, Denise was a slag then and still is. Everyone's tried her out, but nobody went back for seconds except for Terry. Well, if he knew what she was like, why did he...? Well, how should I know? Maybe she's not so fussy about his performance as me. Know what I mean? How'd the operation go? Yeah, it went well. At least it would have done if we'd done it several hours earlier. Several hours earlier? Yeah, we removed the blood clot okay, but the damage was already too severe. It's deteriorating rapidly. I, I don't hold out much hope. The blood clot had been there some hours? Definitely. And could he have been injured last night? Subdural bleeds tend to be slow. It's got to be a possibility. And would he have been unconscious as soon as it happened? Not necessarily, no. So he could have locked all the doors and windows and gone to bed completely unaware that anything was wrong? Well, he'd have had a headache, but otherwise, yeah, that's quite feasible. Great. Sorry. Bingo. Right, call up the van, Dave. Let's get this locked down to the nick. We can go through it properly there. Right, Sarge. 
You must be filled to bits with your old girl. Sierra Oscar from 340 receiving. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Yeah, can we have a van at 4B Gateside Street, transport for property? So, Terry, didn't you have time to eat that lot last night? I had other things on my mind. Like your argument with Len? We weren't arguing. You were when you left the pub, Terry. And now Len's in hospital with serious head injuries. And you are found with a stolen stereo complete with bloodstains. <laughs> I didn't do it. I'd never touch Len. You Sarge. I had a nosebleed. Oh, yeah. Heavy one, was it? Well, lunchtime drinks all round on Alistair, I think, don't you, Susie? All the burglaries and an attempted murder sorted out from a cock up like that, and I'd Murray's luck. You seem pretty sure about it. Well, aren't you? No, it just doesn't seem quite right to me. Why? Len and Terry fall out over the gear. Terry hits Len. They both go home. Len goes to bed and he never wakes up. What more do you want? Len and Terry have known each other for years. Susie, never look a good result in the mouth. Don't try and put this on me. He's my mate. I wouldn't hurt him. Who else could it have been, Terry? I wasn't there. What happened? I didn't see. What was the argument about? Denise. It was right, Big Len, you know. Always was. Oh, if I had gone with Denise, none of this would have happened and that stupid cow wouldn't have had me locked up. Life's full of ifs and buts, Terry. So I'm learning. <sighs> Len thought I was disgusting going with Denise. That's why we argued. It was right. Anyway, he said he'd leave us to it. But he'd pick up that fancy ghetto blaster first. Said it was too easy to recognise. He was going to ditch it. So you all went back to the bed set, yeah? Not straight away. I went to get a takeaway. Who for? Me and Denise. She went to the bed set with Len, said she'd wait there for me. She always had a crush on Lynn, ever since we were kids. And she helped us lose our cherry, so to speak. She takes every chance to hang around him. But Lynn doesn't like her. He hates slags. Hiya, Debbie. You brought in Lisa Norton and that Denise woman, didn't you? <laughs> the brawling bimbos. Yeah, right. Lisa was upset over Denise having it off with her husband, right? Yeah, something like that. Why? Oh, it's just that everyone's so set on Len and Terry falling out over their thieving. I just wondered if it might be over a woman. Denise? Well, she's hardly an oil painting, is she? Perhaps she's got hidden talents. Well, maybe we should get you to find out about them then, Steve. Plenty a bit of undercover work, do you? Not under Denise's covers, no thanks. Has she been charged yet? No, not yet. Sergeant Cry's letting her cool off. It's just that if Len and Terry were fighting over Denise, she might have been there. She might have witnessed the assault. When I got back with the food, Denise was holding a towel to his head and there was a small cut on the side of his head, but he was fine. What did he say had happened? Slipped and fell, but I knew that wasn't true. I didn't want a fuss made. I thought he'd had a go at Denise and she'd clipped him one. She probably saw it all happen, Gov. I think it's time we had a chat with Denise, see what she does know. Um, I was just about to interview her. Susie thinks she might have been a witness to the assault. Well, Terry thinks she did it. Right then, we'll have a chat with her. Come on, Susie. You've got your paperwork to be getting on with, haven't you? Well, you owe me one, remember? Getting Sharon Moss to drop the complaint. <sighs> OK, so maybe I was there, but I didn't hit him. That still makes you an accessory, Denise. The doctor says he's gonna die. <sighs> that can't be true. He was fine, I swear it. Somebody has very probably killed him, and right now, our favourite is you. <sighs> That's ridiculous. It was only a tap. It was enough. Now, tell us what happened. Well, 
Terry went out for a Chinese. Len was only there for the ruddy radio thing. I said I wanted it and he wouldn't give it to me. So I grabbed it and switched it on. I was dancing round and that. There was a knock at the door. So I give the radio to Len and I answer the door. And there's Sharon standing there gulping at me. Sharon Moss? Did she come in? She heard Len say that was quick tell. And then she just walked straight past me. You could see her adding two and two and coming up with five. Took her a minute or two. She never was that quick. Didn't Len say anything? Well, what could he say? Standing there beside the mattress, smoochy number on the machine, and me answering the door like I owned the place. I mean, no one would have believed he was innocent, particularly not a wife. What did she do? Started shouting at him, saying, how could he do it? How could he do it with me? Snotty cow. Made me feel dirty. So I told her, because I was better in bed than her. Didn't then explain? He was gobsmacked and panicking. His darling little Sharon. He just stood there holding the ghetto blaster, struggling to switch the music off, when she grabs it and chucks it at him. Where did it hit him? On the side of the head, where the cut was. What about the injury to the back of his head? He fell backwards, I think. Lost his balance. All the booze he'd had, I suppose. Anyway, he hit the deck with a terrible fud. What did Sharon do? She left. Well, you took him home? Well, I went in the car with him to make sure he got home all right. What with the bump on the head and that, not to mention the booze. Well, when we got there, Sharon wasn't there. But he said he'd be all right. He said that she'd be at her mother's and he'd get his sorted out in the morning. So you left him? Well, he was fine. I had a bit of headache, he said. If I'd have known... I don't see the point in arresting her for assault. Len will only refuse to press charges as soon as he comes round. What if he doesn't? It was a domestic. She didn't mean to hurt him. And how do you think she's going to feel when she finds out that Denise was only there for Terry? I think she knows already. When she told Lisa what happened when they were down at the station making a complaint, I think Lisa will have put her straight. That's why she rushed back here to see Len. Uh, what do you want? How is he? And is revenge still going to be sweet now that you're going to be on your own? You're not seriously going to arrest Sharon, are you? Someone's responsible. But Sharon couldn't do nothing bad. I mean, well, if she found money in the street, she'd go around the nick and hand it in. She was married to a burglar. But she never knew that. Then told her not to worry where the money came from. I'm arresting you for the murder of Leonard Moss. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. If you do not mention when questioned something you later rely on in court, anything you do say may be given in evidence. 